Hello, everybody. Uh, I sent off a lot of F1 spores uh, in the last month or two, and um, I have people asking me now, basically, what is the significance of the F1, F2, etc. Um, I want to go through real briefly, and, and hopefully about seven to ten minutes, um, what we mean by basically a Punnett square and how we sort of predict. Uh, I don't know, I say possible combinations uh, in, a, in our classical Mendelian genetics. Mendel was, uh, Gregor Mendel was a very famous sort of monk teacher back in the eight, late 1800s. And, uh, and uh, he was the first one, it's, it's, he's the, the father of modern genetics. So we sometimes say Mendelian genetics, uh, Mendelian genetics. Um, well, his genetics and the genetics that is probably the simplest um, form of, of you know, the way genetic information gets transmitted from parents to their offspring uh, is what I wanted to, to, to talk about today. So real briefly here, again, this is way, way more complicated, but I want to I just set it up here um, so that maybe some people will have a sort of understanding, a better understanding of this. Uh, so what I want to do is make what's called a Punnett square. And Punnett was another guy's name. I don't, I forgot what his first name was. Um, but what he did was basically say that when you take two parents, uh, I, I don't want to give them names right now. So I'm just going to call them Big B and Little B. I tried to color code them, but let's see how this works out. So if we start off with these two parents, um, these technically would be what would, <laughs> what we refer to as homozygous dominant. So this is homozygous dominant. Homozygous dominant um, is indicated by basically big letters in, in normal like kind of convention. We put big letters for dominant characters and homozygous in the sense that both of the positions uh, or the two alleles are the same. So they're, they're both dominant alleles. And if there is just one copy them, uh, of them, which is, is a bit of a big assumption, um, that, that a B, big B, big B is gonna be homozygous. Uh, and, and those are both the dominant ones because we write big B. So we have another parent. Again, in this example, we're going to use a homozygous dominant and a homozygous recessive uh, parents. So that's what we're going to start off with. Again, that's not always the case. Not everything is Mendelian. Um, but here's how we set it up. So you make a box, essentially. You make a little box. Uh, and I can barely see through my camera tripod here. Um, and basically what you're going to do is you're going to put the parental alleles up here at the top. So that's parent number one and you're going to put parent number two over here. Okay, so this is this is parent number one. Remember parent number one is oops, Parent number one is again homozygous dominant. Parent number two I'll just write P2. That's again the normal convention uh, is going to be homozygous recessive. Okay, so what we're going to do is essentially mix these things together. It's pretty straightforward. You take one of the gametes. Uh, again, you, you're making a lot of assumptions here that all the gametes are going to be just big Bs. So they're the dominant version of that allele. Again, you're assuming that there's only really two versions of the allele, which is a huge, huge assumption. Uh, and you're also assuming lots of other things, that it actually follows the dominant recessive sort of paradigm that Mendel and, and other people have followed since then. We know it's way, way more, more complicated. So things like eye color, skin tone, heights, intelligent, athletic ability, those are all non-Mendelian characteristics. So when we're talking about cubes, for instance, potency, eh, it's not a Mendelian characteristic. Um, if it were, we would have found it a long, long, long time ago. Um, unfortunately, those, those kind of characters are what we call polygenic. Um, they also sometimes feature things like co-dominance and incomplete dominance, and the list goes on and on and on. So, but this is your classic Mendelian genetics. Let me write that down just for anybody who's not catching that. So, Mendel, Mendelian genetics. So, here's what we do. We take one of the parent alleles and we put it here. So remember when we have a typical, again, we're sort of dealing with like a, a diploid IE or, or maybe, you know, a dicarion as we call them uh, in the cube world. Um, so this parent, parent number one, really only has one possible combination and that's a big B. Okay. Second parent over here, small Bs. So as Mendelian referred to, th this is what's called the F1 F1 stands for the first filial. Filial is a fancy, I think, Latin or Greek word that means siblings. So what do we have in the F1 generation? We have four 
big B, little b. That's all. No other possibilities. Okay, so this is where it gets really interesting and confusing because if you were just to stop at the F1, you would think, well, I only really have one possible combination. This actually confused people for many, many decades, if not, if not centuries or even millennia. Where why when you mix uh, two seemingly different phenotypes, i.e. something that's homozygous recessive and homozygous dominant, you know, you mix up a, a, a black and a white one and they're all brown, but then you never get it, you never see the white one or the black one again. And that, that's kind of weird. So it led to this idea of blending, which we know is not, um, not true. Um, there are, but again, other, other complicated topics. Um, so this is the thing that Mendel did. Well, he went to the F2. So this is F1. And again, people were confused, like, oh my gosh, we got all the same thing. It's blending, kind of like when you mix paint. Uh, this isn't really that interesting. Here's what we do, and here's what Mendel did. And this is where I'm gonna scoot the paper over a little bit further here, and I'm gonna make another Punnett square. Make sure I'm in frame here. Okay, so Mendel took these. These are what are called hetero, oops, if I could spell, heterozygous. Okay, so he took the F1 generation. So we're gonna make an F2 generation. Now these spores that I sent out, that's what I sent out. They were the heterozygous F1 spores. Okay, they're boring. Everything's gonna be a wild type brown pheno. Uh, <laughs> like that's it. They're just gonna look like cubes that you'd find growing off a, a cow patty in, you know, Cuba or wherever you might have found them. Well, here's where we're gonna get interesting. And this is why I sent out so many spores because we're gonna do, hopefully y'all will help me. We're gonna find the F2. So we're doing an F2 phenotype. That's what we call it. So if I take these, remember our both parents, we've got big B, little b. Let me draw that black here so we can keep track of these. Again, this, this gets kind of confusing real quick. So the only combinations here that we, just like we did over here. Okay, so now we've got uh, a big B in one parent and a big B in the other parent. And we get a small B and we get a small B. Now here's where things get really interesting because when we mix them up, we get BB and then we get B, small B, get B, small B, and then bada boom, bada bing. We get homozygous recessive and I've changed, <laughs> changed my blue to purple, but you guys get the point. Homo recessive homozygous recessive okay so this is where i don't want to go into this in a lot of detail but we essentially get this one to two to one ratio and if you see that simplified further you'll see a three to one ratio so the three to one ratio appears in the phenotypes so all of these i'm gonna maybe change colors again here i wish i had another color all of these are gonna show the same phenotype right so remember we're dealing with a dominant recessive situation here so three of these are going to show either the homozygous dominant phenotype or the heterozygous and again the, the dominant phenotype so they're all going to have the same phenotype it's these right here we're after so this is where we get our recessive our homozygous homozygous recessive things like our albinos. <gasps> albinos can just pop out. And again, these things like albinism uh, and, and all that other stuff in humans, they're very, very complex characteristics. But in general, it's thought that albinism being a, a, not a really very, um, very good characteristic for a wild type of animal, whether it be a snake or a rat or a cube, um, is it's going to tend to be in the, the homozygous recessive kind of thing, uh, category. So that's what we're looking for, you guys. So when I sent out those spores, what we are looking for is some variation on this theme where we want to get the weird stuff, the mutations, the homozygous recessive. And so again, you had a one out of four chance. 
well, you know, we grow in artificial conditions and who knows what's going to happen. So when these things start popping out, so this is the advantage of running your F2. So what we want to do, we're running you guys. We're doing a Mendelian experiment here. We're going to get F2 phenotypes. So we're doing what you might could call an F2 phenotype, uh, pheno hunt, I should say. That's what we're doing. And I just hit 10 minutes a little bit ago. So I think that's about it. Uh, I could go into a little bit more detail, but that's the basic idea. We're, we're, if, you, if you need some you know, refresher on Mendelian genetics, just go on Wikipedia or whatever. Um, I'll try to do a few more videos. Uh, sorry, I changed colors there on accident, but, but I think y'all get the point. Uh, I think that's pretty much about uh, all to say. So uh, I will see y'all later. Uh, have a good day, night, wherever you're at. Bye-bye. <laughs>